So, now, I've got a lot of questions myself. Uh, why does the Teflon stick to the pan when it's actually non-stick? Why do they call it building when they're actually done building? When do you tell when the yogurt goes bad? And why don't you call bull boys and cowgirls instead of calling them all cowboys? But the most fundamental question of all is this. What is the Honda CBR 250R to the Kawasaki Ninja 250R? A friend or a foe? So let's first start with the styling. Um, the bike which you see here was completely redesigned by Kawasaki in 2008 to make it look sportier. So the older version, the old boxy kind of shape which the previous version had, that made way for sharper lines and a more aggressive front. Riding that, especially in Kawasaki Green, and you stop at a signal, you are going to turn heads. It looks fantastic. It has this big bike feel like it's Elder Brothers. Look at the fit and finish. It's spot on, man. It looks really good. Whoa, 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 okay. What would you call that plasticky instrument cluster then? That's the one thing which I guess Kawasaki forgot to redesign. It looks analog, but hey, it does serve the purpose. Well, the looks and styling then is a very subjective matter. Many people out there liked Megan Fox in the Transformer series. While as if you ask me, I personally liked Rosie Huntington. She was a lot more classier. And just about the same way, the Honda CBR250R looks a lot more classier. It's got smooth lines, it's got the look of the flagship VFR 1200 bike. It also adheres to the Honda's newly adopted layered fairing principle, just like the flagship VFR. But then, doesn't that invoke a lot of confusion? I mean, a CBR which looks like the VFR, that has to be confusing. Confusion? Well, let's just try and figure this out, okay? It's a... It looks like a VFR. Uh -huh. It's not a VFR. Uh -huh. it's, it's called the CBR. Uh -huh. I mean, clearly, it's not a VFR because it's not a V4 either. And uh, it's not a V4 either, so, but it is called a CBR. Okay, okay, so it, it looks like a VFR, it's, but then it's, it's a CBR that looks like a VFR. But it's a single pot cylinder bike. All right, all right, so... You use just one thing from this. <laughs> yeah. He is damn confused. Well, there... As much as this bike. So let's talk performance now. And this is where the Ninja really shines through. At its heart is a very potent 250cc parallel twin engine which produces 33 PS of power and 22 Nm of torque. And if you really want to have fun on this bike, you have to rev her really hard. And revving the bike hard, that is the way you ride the Ninja, very unlike the Honda CBR250R. The whole power delivery of the torque is way low down in the RPM range. If you're riding around in the city or whenever you're overtaking, this bike will require you to make a lot of gear changes. But if you're on the highway where you can pin the throttle, you aim for a blast because that's where this bike is so much fun. So the Ninja was 33 horsepower, this is 26 horsepower. But then you don't really feel the difference as night and day. You are at ease, you are at complete ease knowing that you have some beautiful, beautiful brakes to work with. We are not satisfied with the brakes on the Honda at all. It lacks, number one, the feedback. It lacks the, the biting power again. When doing high, higher speeds on the Honda, you are constantly thinking whether you would have enough braking power should you need to call it. If you're looking for comfort, this might not be the bike for you. The rear seat especially is really hard, it's positioned really high up and there are no grab rails which means the pillion rider is going to really suffer irrespective whether you're riding in the city or on the highway. There's not much pressure on the palms when you're sitting or riding the bike. Seat's also a lot more plush here. He or she's got grab rails there to hold on to. In general, comfort is real high on this bike for city rides as well as touring.
takes the curves really beautifully and is rock steady on the streets. But the bike is pretty heavy. It's 170 kgs plus it has a longer wheelbase. It's about 1400 mm. Whenever you're riding in the city, you are going to feel the weight, the extra weight whenever you're steering the bike. When you're trying to turn the bike into a corner, it is going to require more effort from your part to counter steer the bike. The Honda, on the other hand, has, has a mind of its own when you're riding it. So in its stock form, onto its factory settings, the bike is purely meant for our pothole filled Indian roads, you might say. It's good for touring. But can you really look at a corner and say that you feel like a Rossi today? No, you can't. The suspension doesn't permit you to do that. So I think we can wrap it up then. Then I think it's time for the million dollar question, the verdict. Which bike yeah. should you go for? Back to the rider is what I feel. It's not an apple that's being compared to an apple. The only common thing between these two bikes is the 250cc displacement capacity, not even the engine configuration. So yeah, meant for different things, more towards touring, commuting, city rides, more towards highway blasts and uh, some sort of decent extensive cornering. The ball's in your coat. Ask yourself what sort of a rider you are, what sort of things you demand your bike to be doing. And there you have, you have your pick. If you're an enthusiast, if you want quality, if you want cornering, a bike which corners really well, if you're looking to upgrade to a bigger bike, this is the pick for you. But as he said, if you're looking more into commuting and weekend rides to the highways, then that will serve you really well. So the decision is basically your own. And why call them? Why not call them bull boys? I got a lot of questions myself. Why does the Tef... Okay. Keep rolling. So, now, I got a lot of questions myself.